Welcome to Music Design. Today we will feature Chase Bethea and his soundtrack for A Ground, including an interview and a full song analysis of one of his pieces, Industrial Tech. Take a look at the great interview we had together in the description of this video. A Ground is a mining crafting RPG, which main goal is to survive. The art is very much in the 16-bit voxel-like setting, therefore, the music had to accompany the backgrounds with a score that was not only retro sounding, but also threw in some modern twists. Chase ensured that each song on the soundtrack would complement the many hours players spent on one level. As a result, you'll find that this tune, Industrial Tech, will be quite long and complex in its construction. Taking a big picture look at Industrial Tech, the song is very long for a video game tune at about 4 minutes. The beats per minute is set at a walking speed of 90 BPM, with the time signature for the most part in 4-4. There are a total of 8 sections, including an ending. As I mentioned in the introduction, the reason for the quantity of sections is due to how Chase wanted to avoid repetition as much as possible, and I feel that he did his job admirably here. For the instruments, a lot of bits and bobs were joined together to form this quite quirky song. What's interesting is that most of the instruments are a bit crushed, meaning that an effect was added to digitally crush the sound and make it sound more retro. For example, the main whistle lead in the beginning is an example of bit crush. Now if I take off that effect, hear how it sounds. While well, we'll go over most of the instruments as we progress through the piece, some other notable pointers here is that Chase often switches which instrument takes over the lead instrument. This is another technique that removes repetition. Also stick around for about the halfway point, for this is where many new instruments are added, even a whole new drum kit. Alright, for section 1, I'll play through it first. So we begin with the melody of the tune immediately with the whistle. Now notice the phrasing of the whistle here. We begin with three notes and we repeat it three more times, each with the staccato notes at the beginning which make the uh, melody sound a bit playful. For the bouncy synth, it has a gliding effect attached to it. Now most synthesizers have the option to adjust the glide, so if a note overlaps onto the next note, it will slide up to it, producing this cool effect. Now next in this section, the synth guitar provides a bit of texture and a sort of background and counterpoint to the crush whistle. So once the whistle plays out its melody, the synth guitar pluck continues in its pattern. Now the instrument itself is very compressed and also crushed, which contrasts very well with the very reverbed bouncy synth. And then lastly for section one, we have this plucky instrument that's introduced. This is very much a constant throughout the entire song as you can kind of see here, but this sound provides much of the driving rhythm of the tune. It only alternates between D and A. Section 2, I'll play through it again. So let's take a look at the percussion in this section here. The beat itself is quite peculiar with this very unique kick drum pattern. The kick is this C note here. Let me solo it.
Now the hi-hats here on this F sharp are always aligned with the plucky instrument I mentioned earlier. So the hi-hat provides a little bit of the high end for this plucky instrument. Now these top notes are sort of like a steam, kind of indicating like a machine noise letting off some steam. Of course, the actual sound is white noise that is, has a bit of a decay and released attached to it. Now, for the back on this, for the snare, which are these two notes, it's actually more of a snap type of sound. Which is, section two mostly lets off the melody here, the focus on the bouncy synth, along with the other background instruments. What's new and interesting here is the what's added here, the watery marimba. Now check out how this sounds. Now to get this type of sound, all you need to do is take a marimba, add a phaser, delay, and cut off the top end, and you'll get this watery effect. So we return back to section 2 here, which is mostly a repeat of the intro, before heading into section 3a. So let's take a look to about halfway in section 3. So as you can tell, there's only three instruments in this first part, including a new instrument, the crushed lead. Now you can see that this, uh, this pattern loops throughout this entire section three. The crushed strings are the next instrument added, and it's actually a combination of multiple instruments. We first have this tapping sound, which I'll solo in a second. Here we go. And next we have the crushed synth. Which of course provides much of the crushed sound to it. And then we have a crushed pad as well. Again, this, uh, this pattern repeats pretty much verbatim throughout the entire of section 3B. And then at the very end of section 3, you have the bouncy synth return. Now this pattern uses uh, some beautiful type of notes here, which include some major 7th intervals for a very mel melancholic effect. And then we have the transition back to the first section, which is basically just a stripping down of everything, and then the small riff of the crushed whistle. Alright, so let's play section 4 for you. So here we introduce a intriguing lead by the synth guitar pluck, which returns. So slowing this down, you can see that it only alternates between two notes, the C sharp and E, and then it jumps octaves every so often. So here's a slow down. Now other interesting things is that this whole entire lead is composed in triplet time. So if you go over here, you can see that it's in third step. 
All right, the new section, section five. I'll play out this one. So notably, we changed the song from A major to C minor. So we add a second drum set here to the mix. This new kit is a lot more aggressive, yet a bit more in the background as well. The influence of machinery and industry can be more easily heard here in the kit, as many of the different sounds of this drum kit reminds me of the sounds you would hear in such a place. For example, in part B of section 5, you'll hear the main beat play. Especially in that snare, you, it sort of harkens to that industrial type of beat. The bouncy synth is again here. But it sounds a lot more aggressive and darker. The melodic pattern is also a bit all over the place here, but it maintains that C-sharp, which remember is the key of the song here. For our lead here, it's a very simple lead going down every whole step. It descends down the scale of C-sharp minor until we hit the D-sharp. And then finally, we have a new, another new instrument, the oil can, or some type of percussive hit. As you can tell, there's a lot of delay and reverb added to this. So as you can quite well see, section 5 takes quite a bit to complete, with many different variations. So I'll play a few snippets of each of these. So here we have all the instruments, mostly. But then in section 3, 5B, we take away the oil can, but introduce the synth pluck. You can also tell that the bouncy synth was moved up to one whole tone to D sharp. To kind of introduce more tension there. Then section 5C, we eliminate the first drums, still keeping the second, bringing back the oil can. Introducing the plucky. Again, this section is ever so slightly than this section, the other 5B, because we add this plucky instrument. And then the 5C, Just ever so slightly from this 5C because we add the hi-hats and plucky. So let's head into section 6. Now the whistle makes its return here, playing a more minor version of the original melody we heard at the beginning of the tune. The bouncy synth also makes an introduction, again here. This time with its tonal center on G sharp, still in the key of C sharp minor though. Now again we see we have this first section here, halfway through, and then this next one is sort of a repeat of this first part, except we add the oil can here. Section 7 has a very cool oil can and watery marimba combination here, making for a great sound.
So the oil can first establishes that melody with these hits every so often. But then here at about the halfway point, the watery marimba takes the lead in terms of the loudness here. So awesome little melody right there. Now what's going on in the foreground is that we have this crush lead playing. Kind of taking a step back, we begin on the C sharp, which is of course our main key here. And then we see it steadily declining down in the bass note while keeping these top notes the exact same thing. This part is definitely the climax of the song. It also sort of acts as a transition back to the first half of the song because we add many of the original instruments that make a return. This section also features a call and answer melody where one instrument, in this case the whistle, will play a melody followed by another instrument playing that exact same melody. Listen to how the whistle and the crushed synth play off the melodies here. Also, the watery marimba gets tied together with a piano here. Just ever so slightly. And they both loop the exact pattern throughout the entire rest of the song. In section 8b, the crushed lead takes one final return. Now listen to this lead. Again, using the glide effect. So as you can tell, it sort of transitions into something a lead guitar solo would play. The ending. So the bouncy synth here is paired with the watery marimba and piano, which act as its counterpoint. They end by playing only two keys, F sharp and D sharp. Now this ending section sort of acts as a rebreather until we hit the loop again, after this climax before. The song ends with the plucky instrument, one of the key signatures of the song. Alright, that's it. Industrial Tech by Chase Bethea. It's an awesome song from start to finish. It manages to avoid repetition through its many variations and instrument switching, along with its long length. For a world like a ground where a player might be playing through a level for a long time, it's necessary that Chase had to use compositional techniques to make the songs more enjoyable to listen to, yet also replayable. Thank you for joining me on this next episode of Music Design. If you haven't already, go and watch my interview with Chase, the composer of this track, who discusses about his own experiences while working with the Aground team and his advice he would give to aspiring composers. I'll leave you with the full song playthrough of Industrial Tech by Chase Bethea. Thank you.